What is created? It is a place where we get edified by testimonies, where kids create and teens ask, where news intercede and conversations become a well of prayers. We are an online pulpit where the Word of God is revealed to create a new remnant that searches for ways to be in God, with God, by God. We are created. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are on Exodus 25, uh, and this is the Exodus series. Welcome, welcome to 85. Welcome to 85. Amen and amen. Let us read from verse 1 again, because uh, the, <laughs> the other one, yeah, it just uh, switched off on us, but... Uh, it's important that we start from the beginning. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. We have already prayed. Um, I pray that the Holy Spirit truly be with us. We really need him here. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Exodus 25 verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake, unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart he shall take my offering and this is the offering which ye shall take of them gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skinned, skins dyed red, and badger's skins, and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. The onyx stones, and stones to be set in the effort, and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. Amen. Now among ten, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staffs of shittim wood, mm -hmm. and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staffs into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. The staff shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat 
and make one shurubim on the one end and the other shurubim on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall you make the shurubims on the two ends thereof. And the shurubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another towards the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above, uh, upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make there too a crown of gold around about. And thou shalt make unto it a border of an hand breadth uh, round about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof around about. And thou shalt make it, and thou shalt for, make for it two four rings of gold and pure, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the borders shall the rings be um, for places of the stars to bear the table and thou shalt make bless you lord thou shalt make the stars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be born with them and thou shalt make the dishes thereof and spoons thereof and covers thereof and bowls thereof to cover with all of pure gold shall thou make them and thou shalt set upon the table Shoe, uh, shoe bread before me always. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, um, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides uh, of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side three, uh, three bowls made like unto almond with a knob and a flower in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch uh, with a knob and a flower so in the sixth branch um, that come out of the candlestick and in the candlestick that um Candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almond with their knobs and their flowers, and there shall be a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, and the knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceeded out of the candlestick. Their knobs and their branches shall be of the same, or it shall be one beaten work of gold, pure gold, my God. And thou shalt make the seven lamps, the lamps um, thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof, and the snuff dishes uh, thereof, shall be the, of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels, and look that thou may and look that thou make them after their patterns which was showed thee in the mount amen and amen i know it's very long but it's important that we read amen um so this is um I just want to copy that and uh, the other one I'll copy later. Okay, that's fine. And so the word of the Lord says, um, and Moses, and, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me offering. 
Okay, speak to them. Okay, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with the with his heart. Ye shall take my offering. If a man is not giving this willingly, you can't take it. You can't force people to give unto God. You must let them give willingly. Amen. And that is the instruction of the Lord. If you if you coerce them, if you try and convince them, if you try and, you know, and then there's like that hesitation before they give, that is not, God is not going to receive that. God will definitely not receive that. So it is important that you explain to the people why they should be given and that's it. And you let them give out of their own accord. Amen. And he says, and this is the offering which ye shall take from of them. And God is very specific when it comes to what he wants from the people. You must remember when they left Egypt, he said to them, go and borrow. Go and borrow um, uh, from the Egyptians. And then they left with that stuff. Okay. And he said, borrow gold, silver. That, there's a reason why he said that. This is the reason. Because God already has foreseen what needs to be done, um, you know, going forward. Amen. So he knew that they have to build a temple for him. So we will, they will need, you know, um, things to build that temple with. But now, um, even though he said, go and borrow, he's still asking for the stuff. He is not saying, give them to me. I told you to go borrow them. Therefore, these things are mine. You know, God is such a gentleman. He says, um, if you are willing to give it to me, I know I gave it to you, but if you are willing to give it to me so I can do this, then, um, you know, I'd appreciate that. That's basically what the Lord is saying. So even with us, God can, can bless you so much. And then he will say to you, please bless that person with this. There's just a little bit of what I've blessed you with. You know, so you can't say, no, this is all mine and this and that. That's just so selfish, you know, because God has already given that to you. And he's asking that please give that one because he knows why he gave it to you. Can you see that everything that the Lord gives to you, that there's a purpose for it? You don't know. It's not just because God likes you, <laughs> you know, there's a purpose for it. So whatever that you hold, whatever that God blesses you with, remember that God is going to ask something of you and you will have to give. Matter out of your own accord, you know. So it's better to give to the Lord rather than just hold it. Because God said, the Lord won't give it to you again because he's seen your heart. Or ah, this one, I'll give them and then they won't, they won't, they won't want to share. You see. Amen. And by the way, the ark itself, it's not even for God. It is for us. God is saying, I want to build an ark so that I may dwell among you. Can you even see that? The mercy and the grace, Yamudim, that even when he's taking from you, it is for your own good. He's not saying, no, give it to me. That's, that's mine and that's that. It's still for your own good. I want, I want to use a little bit of this uh, from your own pocket, but so that I may be able to dwell with you bless you lord amen you know what i'm looking at right now there's a pulpit in my room and i'm looking at this pulpit and it's exactly what the lord was saying you know when he asked when he said to me go and get a pulpit i could not understand and i was like ah i don't understand why must i get a pulpit and where is it gonna stay because i'm i mean you know and uh two years this pulpit has been in my room but how this pulpit was bought was incredible because the little money that I had, God said, buy a pulpit. And I took all that money and I went and bought the pulpit. Not knowing what I'm going to do uh, later with it or, or what I'm going to do with the money, with, you know, without the money and, and, and all of that. And I only paid half of that money, you know, for the pulpit. And the rest of the money, it came from the money that I had put aside 
for for <laughs> for for a tide because normally every day i would you know if i get some little money there and there i'll take an envelope and take 10 percent of that money and put it in, in in that envelope until like the end of the week or the end of the month where i can actually give you know a tide you know uh with all the 10 percent in that envelope the one day I opened that envelope and that money that was in there was the exact amount of money that I needed to pay to get the pulpit out. That is God's money. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, that God is requiring from you just little, just little and say, come and partner, partner with me so that I can dwell with you right now. You know, I can, I can tell you now when I pray on that pulpit, things move. Things shift. It is unbelievable. I, I'm even scared of it, you know. But this is exactly what the Lord is saying. He says, just give me something from your pocket. I'm going to build something so that you and me can be in one spot, you know, so I can be among you. That's what the Lord is saying. You don't know when you are blessing somebody who that person is. You don't know. You don't know after you bless them what he says about you. And that's a way for him, for God to bring you closer to him. Can you see that? So we don't know. So whenever the Lord is asking, it may look ridiculous to you, or it may look like it's too much, or it may look like, oh, Lord, how can you ask me for all my money? I don't have anything. Then what's going to happen to me after that? It may even look like that. But God is saying, I know why I'm doing what I'm doing, you know? And every time when the Lord asks us for something, we must remember the character of God. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Lord said. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even when he asks us for things, we must not think, ah, the Lord is being unfair. You know, because he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It means that he, he's he will cover you anyway. Whether you are given that money or he will cover you. So even if he takes all your money, he will still cover you because he knows he took all your money. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what happened that month. And I was like, wow, Lord, you, you, you know, you are so incredible. Actually, he gave me more than what I actually needed, you know. And uh, so when the Lord asks us for something, it is not just for himself. Yeah, nah, he doesn't need anything from us, really. He's doing it for you. He's doing it for you. Amen. Let's let's move on. Um, I'm on 25. I'm in 25 verse 3. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Gold, silver, brass, and blue. Purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins uh, dyed in red, and badger skins and shatem wood. Okay, and then you also need oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense okay and you also need the onyx stones stones to be set in the effort and in the breastplate these were 12 stones these ones 12 stones okay that were set on the effort and on the breastplates of the priests there was a reason why the priest had these uh these stones and we're gonna cover that um at a later stage when the lord is speaking about that amen and he says, and let them make me a sanctuary huh? that I may dwell among them. Look at that. Look at God. He says, build a sanctuary so I may dwell among them. With what I'm asking you, do this thing so that I can be with you. That's what the Lord is saying. How incredible is that? According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And God is very specific when he wants uh, certain things, you know. I can tell you now, when I bought this pulpit, God himself showed it to me and said, buy this one, you know. If it was up to me, I would have bought the cheapest one because at that point I was thinking, ah, I don't know where I'm going to get the rest of the money, you know. But God said, I want that one. And I was like, okay. And I looked for it. I looked for it until I found it. And then I, you know, and I bought it. Same time. I didn't even try and hesitate or whatever. I just said, okay, Lord, it's fine. You know, because actually it wasn't the first time he was showing me this pulpit. 
He showed me the pulpit, I'm sure, I don't know, like, you know, the second time he showed it to me, like it was as clear as day. And I, I remember asking the Lord, I was like, so Lord, you want me to buy a, pul a pulpit and put it in my room? I don't understand, you know? And the Lord kept quiet because he knew what he wants to do with it at a later stage. I didn't know. Amen. So they, so the Lord will show you what it is that he wants you to do. After he asks you to, to give of what you have, of what he has given you already, he will also show you what to do with that. Amen. And follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Don't try and, you know, try and figure it out and try and go there. If you don't have it, if you think this is too much for you, speak to God and say, I don't understand. I don't know where, uh, where I'm going to get this thing. And, 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 and I promise you, he will make a way. It, he will make it so easy for you to get the things that he said initially that you should get. Amen. And so the Lord was asking them for things that he already knew that they have. You see, he wasn't asking them for things that they don't have. They already, they already have these things because he's the one that told them, go and get these things from the Egyptians. Amen. So now, um, I'm on nine. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Now, on 10. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Okay. Uh, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Excuse me. And a cubit and a half uh, the height thereof. So an ark. Okay. There it is. So if, if you look at this, yeah. if you look at this, so the Lord is giving, ooh, Jehovah, Sheila. <laughs> My children are laughing at me. So you can look at this, and then he's giving them all the measurements for this ark. Hmm? He's giving them all the measurements for this ark. And he says, do this and do that and do that. This is, uh, you know, the, the ark. And then after that, he says, you must, you, you must, um, you must also put, um, there it is. Okay, so he says, you shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half. That's the length and the cubit, and that's the breadth and also the height of it. And after that, he says, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood. You know, he's very specific what type of wood he wants. He wants shittim wood because he knows this wood must last. I mean, you remember how long these people were going around with this ark. Hmm? So shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half breadth of it and a cubit and a half the height of it. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. So it's wood, but it's overlaid with pure gold. Amen. So this is why they, have, they, have, they, they, they look gold. Okay, cool. And he says, within and without. So you overlay it with pure gold inside and outside. Okay. Within and without, it's inside and outside. I just love the old English days. Um... Uh, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about it. I mean, if you look at it, okay, let me just, let me just uh, paste it here. So we can have a look at it here. Can you see? So it says the gold must be inside, it must be outside. I mean, this is, this is a, this, if you look at this, this top part here. Ooh. Now this thing I'm bored of serious it. <laughs> so if you look at this thing here, okay, this is the top of it. This is um this is called the messy seat. But this whole entire thing, this box here, this is what the Lord is talking about. Okay, and he says you may just make a crown run about it, and then and then there's a messy seat that you put on top of it. Okay, but uh, God is gonna talk about it right now. And thou shalt cast four rings, okay, of gold uh, for it. So if you look here, 
uh, I'm telling you people, you see the stylus pens and what, 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 <laughs> there's the rings, if you can see this, and then on the other side and the other side, these are four rings, and then after that, he says, and then you must do, you, you must put the stick, okay, okay so it, there it is, um, yeah, so he says four rings of gold, you know, for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. You see how specific the Lord is, very, very specific, it's amazing. And then uh, on 13 he says, and thou shalt make staves, staves, the staves of wood, shittim wood again. So shittim wood is very strong. Uh, this is a very strong wood. And overlay them with gold. So they must all be gold. So it's wood overlaid with gold. There's the staves. Okay. These are the staves that the Lord is talking about. The, the, you know, the, the sticks to carry the, the ark. And thou shalt put the stuff into the rings by the sides of the ark. Can you see? It's already put in there. That the ark may be born with them, so that the ark can be picked up with these stars. Okay, to be born is to be picked up. Okay, and the stars shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. Can you see that? Amen. I just love what, yeah, you know, I just love this. Amen. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. So, God has not, included which I shall give thee. He has not given him the, the, uh, the stones yet. God has not given him the stones yet. Okay, so the Lord is saying to Moses, I will, give, I will still give you the stones that you should be, you should be putting in there. Okay. And then, and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. So the mercy seat is not, uh, is not the, um, the shatim uh, wood that is overlaid with gold. This must be pure gold. This is what I was talking about when I said, um, and I paste it again. When I said to you, this part, this thing here at the top here, that's called the messy seat. This whole entire thing. This is a messy seat. Okay. This is made of pure gold. Completely pure gold. Amen. So, and then he says, two cubits and a half uh, be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Okay. And then... Um, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Here are the cherubims. These are the cherubims. Two cherubims of gold. So these are angels. Okay. Um, beaten work, meaning that they must be carved. So a beaten work is a carved work. You know, shall thou make them. In the two ends of the messy seat. They are on top of the messy seat, right at the end. Amen. And then, ooh, yeah, 19. And make one cherubim on the other, on the one end, and the other cherubim on the other end, even of the messy seat, shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high. It's a element. Can you see? The wings, the wings are stretched forth on high, okay? And the wings, they start touching each other, okay? Let's remove this so we can see nicely. So the wings, there it is. The wings are touching right there, okay? Also on the other side, amen. Um, so, and then it says, and their faces shall look one to another. They must face each other. To what the messy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be? Can you see the instructions? Yo, Mary, the Lord, Mary, yo, he's amazing. It's like so specific with everything that he's saying. Hmm? Every single thing. Amen. 
now we are on 21 amen welcome to uh other saints that are joining in welcome servants of god uh yeah appreciate you being here amen uh do say hi there on the comment section if you can and uh remember to to yeah to press the like button amen amen okay <clears throat> yeah so we can see who you are you know <laughs> All right, so we are on 21. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above, upon the ark. Remember that, ne? Or the ark is, is that, it's that, that small part. I mean, the, the big part. I'm going to uh, paste it here again. So this is the ark. This is the ark. Only this box here is the ark. The mercy seat is here. So the Lord is saying, take them a seat and put it above the ark. Amen. And then, um, now I'm on 22. Where am I? Okay. Yeah, that shall put the 21. That shall put the messy seat above, upon the ark, and, the, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee. Can you see that? God says, I will meet you there, by the mercy seat, there. Not anywhere else. That's where I'm going to meet you. Okay. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Look at God. The Lord is literally saying that this is where I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to rub this out. This is where God is going to be. Right here. Communing with his people. Right there. Hmm? From heaven. This heaven. God is going to sit there and start talking to the people. Yo, guys, it's coming. It's coming. You'll see how <laughs> how, how the Lord is so amazing. Mm -hmm. But people could not believe it when they saw. Huh? The, 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 when they saw a, a, the light of God, the glory of God coming into the temple after everything, after everything was built, it came from above into the temple but everybody saw it and everyone was just in wonder guys i'm talking about people that just saw waters being scattered that saw uh uh you know the pillar of fire the pillar of a cloud things raining from heaven hey it was just incredible these are the same people but now imagine when they see the glory of god they were just in complete wonder imagine what that looked like Ooh. I can't wait. And, um, and now I'm on 23. Okay. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. This is another table. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half um, the height thereof. This is the, the table that we call the table of the shoe bread. But I'm going to show it to you just now. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold and make there to a crown of gold around about. And thou shalt make it unto it a border of an hand breadth around about. And thou shalt make a golden crown mm -hmm. to the border thereof around about. Amen. Um, and thou shalt make for it four rings mm -hmm. as well of gold. And pure and put the rings in the four corners uh, that are of the four feet. Okay, thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be four place mm -hmm. of the staffs to bear the table. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt take the staffs of Shittim wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with them. So even this needs, it's almost similar to the Ark of the Covenant, but um, this is the table of the shoe bread and um mm -hmm. and thou shalt make the dishes thereof and spoons and thereof and covers thereof and bowls thereof to cover without 
okay, of pure gold shall thou make them. So the all the all the elements that they are going to use. Uh, with the uh, and put on the table of the shoe bread that the high priests are going to use must be of pure gold. This is why remember uh, during the divided kingdom, right to uh, you know like at a later stage when um, uh, the son of whose son was it the one where the the, the hand what's his name someone. Ah, Belshazzar. Belshazzar, that's it. You see, my sons know. Belshazzar was um so he took the 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 cups from the cabin these are the same cups that we are talking about and they were drinking wine and partying with them and the hand of god started writing on the wall huh? and uh they called in um they called in daniel daniel was like hey you're gonna die tonight you are dying you are dead <laughs> and uh he died you know uh this is this is the reason I you know if if you start understanding the things of God or if things of God are not to be played with God knows why he's saying what he's saying and he knows what he you know um uh, the, the importance of of what he has given unto us so we as the children of God we must give a reverence to the things of God amen mm, mm, mm. okay so, and then the Lord says, and thou shalt set upon the table shoe bread before me always. Every single time, shoe bread must be sitting there. Amen. Let's go look at uh, what this um, table looks like. Uh -huh. Give me one second. Let's copy that. Yes, this is the table of uh, shoe bread. You see all the things that the Lord was talking about. They're right here. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Oh, Job. Look how beautiful this is. Hmm? So, oh, this is so stunning. Look at that. <laughs> so, this is the table of the shoe bread. So, there's other elements that are supposed to be here. Those bowls, the cups, and, and all of that. This is a serving table basically, you know, for the high priest, between the high priest and what God is going to give unto the high priest. Look how beautiful it is. And there's the crown that the Lord was talking about and also the crown here as well. And that, you know, so it's a beautiful table. And the stars that God was talking about and also the rings that are on the sides to be able to carry the table. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I just need to make sure that this doesn't uh, disturb us. Okay, cool. Now I'm on 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Let me go copy the candlestick. So it's easy for us to have a look. This is so pretty. Oh, guys, this is really pretty. Copy. Mm hmm where are we? Okay, we are here. We're talking about the candlestick now. Mm. Okay. Uh, he says, And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of pure gold. Mm? Everything must just be pure gold. Now there's no a uh, baby tongue. Uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, yeah, the Lord is not talking about the wood. And then you cover it, and then you put uh, gold over it. This is, must be pure, pure gold. Okay. And uh, we are going to talk about this whole pure gold, you know, because every time the Lord is talking about gold, um, gold is a, is a, it's an element that cannot be uh, destructed. Like you can't, you, the more you burn it, the, the more refined it becomes. You can't destroy gold, you know. So um, this is why the Lord is saying gold it's un it's it's indestructible basically amen um so thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold of beaten work so this candlestick it must be carved beaten work remember i said it's a carving okay it must be carved and um shall the candlestick be made his shafts his shaft and his branches uh his bowls 
his knobs and his flowers shall be of the same. Okay, they must also be, be, be carved. So if you look at this, look how beautiful this is. So this is, mm, Jesus, mm, my God, the Lord is speaking. Okay, so this is, if you look at this, okay, this is, a sh and then these are the branches. Remember the branches that we read earlier? He said the six branches, and then there's knobs of it, over it, you see, and the flowers. These are the flowers, okay? I don't know. I don't know these things. Uh, I don't know about that. But anyway, um, so he says, and six branches shall come out of it. They are the six branches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six branches, okay? Six branches. And um, they must come on the side of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side. And three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Okay, then there must be three bowls made like unto almonds. These are the little bowls uh, right at the top. Okay, um, with a knob, and there's a knob there, and a flower in one branch. So if you look at this again, I'm gonna write this out quickly so we can see nicely. There it is. Um, if you look at it, there's a knob, there's a flower, and there's um, the, the cup. Uh, it's, it's like a bowl. They, they, you know, the Lord was saying it's a bowl. So there's the bowl. That's where the candle is being put. So that's what the Lord is saying. They must make it like that. How beautiful is that? Okay. Uh, oh, there it is. And three bowls. Can you see that? Made like unto almond with a knob and a flower and in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower so in the six branches that came out of the candlestick okay these people you know these people you must just pray for these people guys it's disgusting Please don't look at that. Um, we just continue. You can hide that nonsense from your chat box. Okay. Right. And then um, number 34. In the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almond. Okay. With their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches of the same. And a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob, a knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches. So each branch, so all the six branches, they need to have these knobs. Okay, look at that. Can you see, they are right there with three knobs, you know, under the flowers, under in them by the branches. Okay, and then also, yeah, Jehovah. There's the other knobs. Can you see that? Hmm. That the Lord is talking about. Okay, cool. Hmm. Um, yes. So, and a knob under two branches of the same. Yeah, there it is. They're correct. These, these are the knobs. These, these are the knobs that the Lord is talking about. So, under two branches, here's a knob. Under two branches, there's another knob. Under two branches, there's another knob. Amen. Okay. And then he says, uh, so and, and so for all six of them, they must it must look like that. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit lost. Let me just see where I am. And a knob under two branches, the same. Okay. Cool. Um, according to the six branches that proceedeth out of the candlestick. Okay. And then now on 36, their knobs and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. So it's not even something that is completely separate from each other. It must literally be one thing. So you take one slab of gold and you start carving it, making sure that everything is what well. It's not gutty piece piece. God is not talking gutty piece piece. He's saying they must all be one thing. Amen. Um, and thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof. Okay. 
and they shall light the lamp thereof, they, that they may give light over against it. So now there's seven. Okay, if you look at that, it does look like the seven of them. You know, see, it's, uh, it's the ooh, -wee. yo, stylus pen. Hey guys, okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, amen. And then, um, where am I? Okay. 37 and that shall make the seven lamp stands okay um done with that one now we're on 38 and the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes you know what a snuff dish is i went and <laughs> looked at that i was like ah yeah, lord you're talking about snuffs now no it's actually a dish for ash you know so um <laughs> the uh therefore shall be of pure, pure gold so it's like an ash dish it's not snaky like a <laughs> so that's funny <laughs> so it's a it's a snuff dish so it's for ashes okay amen and then of a talent of gold of pure gold uh, shall he make it with all these vessels amen and look that thou make them after their pattern okay which was showed thee in the mount so the lord is making sure that he, Moses, I've showed you this. Make sure that it looks exactly the same as what I've showed you. This is what I was saying to you earlier. And I was saying, when the Lord says to you, do this, he will even show you exactly what it is that he wants you to do. Do it exactly the way God said you must do it because there's a reasoning behind that. You know, it's not just asking for the sake of, oh, no, it needs to look pretty. And then you think you can be, you know, you can do better than God. You can't, you know, I can't do better than God. You can't do better than God. So let's rather listen to exactly what he's saying. Amen. So all of these things that he's, he's explaining here, there's a reason for them. And we're going to find out a little bit later, you know, each and every single thing. And uh, towards the end, after we've, we've, we've looked at all the furnishings, then we're going to look at what they actually represent uh, with us today. Okay, so the temple of, 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 of the Lord, the temple of Moses, they call it the temple of Moses at this point, and then later on is the temple of um, Solomon. You know, it still has the same furnishings and stuff, but with Moses, it was under a tent because um, they were moving around. So they needed something that they're able to pack up and then move to the next place and then, you know, reestablish it again. But with uh, Solomon, because the land that the Lord had already given to them was already established, therefore Solomon was able to build uh, that temple. Amen. And um, this is what I was saying the other day, Hori, you know, with, with every single person that is in the Bible, there's a reason why they are there. And so are you. You, there's a reason why you are here. You know, you don't know uh, whether you are the next person to do something incredible for God. You know, we must, all so, we must all be so expectant. We must want God to use us. We don't know. You know, our lives are so important. Or you could be somebody who is going to be the person that carries the next person who's going to be super important to God. You don't know. You don't know the children that you're carrying or the children that you're raising, that there may be some somebody that is amazing, you know, uh, tomorrow. We don't know that. So let's trust God with everything that he's telling us to do. Let's trust him with our lives. He has a plan. This is a plan. Can you see how how precise God is? He gave him measurements. He gave me he gave him numbers of things that he's supposed to be doing. He gave them, you know, every single thing that that you know that it, it must be done with gold. It must be done with uh, shatim or wood, and it must be covered inside and outside. This one must just be pure gold, and this one must not be the piece piece. It must be carved from you know from scratch. Everything that God is speaking about, he knows best. He's the one that knows best. So let's trust him. Whatever that he tells us to do, we must trust God. Amen. I'm just loving this. You know, when I read it, like I read it like three times. And when I read it, I was like, yo, Lord, 
these are like instructions in J and you know what are we what are you saying to us and that's exactly what he's saying trust me that's basically the whole entire script uh, chapter god is saying trust me when i tell you to do this do it exactly the way i said you must do it amen and amen I love you guys and thank you so much for joining in. I see today we've got like a number of people. Thank you so much for joining in. I pray that the Lord may bless you and uh, that he may continue ministering his word in your life. Um, I will see you tomorrow. We are, we, yeah, we go on at six o'clock. Today we were a little bit late, but that's okay. Uh, tomorrow we start at six o'clock and we will be doing Exodus 26. So we started from uh, Genesis 1 and the Lord instructed me and said to me, you must do from Genesis to Revelation. And uh, this is what we are doing every single morning. Do join us. Uh, everybody that's new, please do join us as we go forward um, with this. And then you can also look uh, on, you know, on the very same um, playlist you'll see that we started from Genesis 1. You can start listening to it as you are washing dishes, you are busy with stuff. Just put on your earphones and just listen in, you know, and uh, you'll see how incredible God has been, you know, throughout this journey. And, uh, yeah, so I love you guys, and um, I'll see you tomorrow. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God, for your grace. Thank you, my Father, for each and every person that has joined us this morning, mighty God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, as they take care of your stuff, that you may take care of their stuff, Almighty God. Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue ministering to them, Heavenly Father. Where I have not reached, mighty God, Father, I pray that you go there with them, mighty God. Father, I pray, Ndumakomatla, for your grace, Heavenly Father, to be so um, evident in our lives, Ndumakomatla, that, Heavenly Father, we never miss you, mighty God, that we always know that you are with us, almighty God. Father, we thank you for this morning. It's such grace, Heavenly Father, to trust us with this word and to show us things, the secrets of, 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 you know, of heaven. These are the secrets of heaven. And we know, mighty God, that you're still going to um, give us more, Heavenly Father, for our equipping, mighty God, that tomorrow we may be able to do what you are asking us to do, mighty God, for the kingdom of God and for your glory. We thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. We love you so much. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.